Hey guys, and welcome back to Doom. Well, we uh, managed to make it out of hell in One Piece, but uh, as you'll see in uh, just a memento, I don't think things are any better on this side of the pool. My god. Jesus. You think we just went from one side of hell to the other? Yeah, basically. <laughs> they really went to town while we were gone. Oh, what a vista. You seeing this shit? Oh, I'm seeing it, and it looks damn fine. It's weird how they can make red and brown look so goddamn pretty. Oh, it's the contrast, I suppose, but uh, if I recall correctly, you said we'd be meeting a new monster in this part, is that correct? Uh, yes, we should well be. It should be very early in this part, actually. It's like one of the first, or no, the second room, I believe, but you'll see it soon enough. Okay. But first, we're gonna get some weapon upgrades sorted out, and, uh, making our siege mode laser cannon a little bit better. Getting some overdue upgrades here and there. You do tend to neglect some of the smaller arms, eventually. But, um, it's always a good idea just to keep them on tap, just in case, because, you know, they have the utility, because, you know, the plasma rifle can stun, and, of course, the assault rifle has the mini rockets, which is always a fun time, even if it isn't as, uh, impressive as the rocket launcher. I unlocked uh, bottomless rockets on um, one of my things, and uh, yeah, that shit's fun. So much that I was constantly running out of ammo, just spamming the shit. <laughs> well, that's another reason why getting the ammo upgrades first is a good idea. The further you get into the game, the more the idea seems to be supported, but uh, this is a fairly quiet area to begin with, so it seems like a logical place to put a secret, you know. It's unassuming. That always freaks me out, just because you can't actually target or kill those things, but we've always got we've got these demons running around in the background. It's like huh. I wanna shoot them, but I can't. They're background characters. How did I miss this lever? Like out of all the secrets, this should have been the one I got in, because I looked around here quite a fair bit. Well, it's what you don't really suspect. I mean, the area is quite quiet, and you don't really assume anything. It's just like, oh, I just need to get from point A to point B. And it's not really that well... Well, it's not hidden well enough that you'll never find it. But, you know, you have to go a bit out of your way just to grab it. So unless you're, like, jumping around everywhere, chances are you might still miss it just jumping onto crates and not looking down. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. Uh, we have the Kako Demon model, Rage Guy, his ultimate form. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like Ultra Rage Guy might be a thing at some point. <laughs> it's like Ultra Instinct, except it's just pure anger. <laughs> I'm not going to even attempt to sing the song. I don't know, Japanese well enough. Ooh, are we going to have a sort of siege mode in here? Not your gun, I mean the actual thing here. Uh, no, we're gonna remove it from the tripod, because only wusses rely on a stand to carry this behemoth. We are Doom Guy. we are strong enough to carry this thing with us with our bare hands. And this is the crappiest buffet table I've ever seen. Only two items, come on. You could've at least put some hors d'oeuvres there. Oh god, I did not realise you could pick that chain gun up. I'm an idiot. I thought things were gonna start piling through the door and you just have to get on the turret like in other, less... Less well-made FPS games. Actually, there's a point I want to bring up that in the previous part, there is actually a section where you can get the chain gun slightly earlier. Uh, you may remember in that area where the man kippers was kind of trapped on the floor and kind of like jumps up at you. Uh -huh. And if you carry on down that path after you've killed the... Um, Hellraiser? No. What the hell's its name again? The Hell's something or other. And you kill him and there's a little tunnel where the chain gun is just kind of hiding away. Like, hmm, I hope nobody will find me, otherwise it'll be very, very bad for the demons. So yeah, you can actually pick this weapon up slightly earlier, so keep that one in mind if you do happen to play through this game yourself. So the, uh, well, the, the, there's your objective right now. We've got to go to the Lazarus facility, but I don't think the demons are going to be making this easy for us. You may notice it's a short chapter, but they've packed a lot of action in here to make up for that. Oh yes, and the action begins right now! Ah, uh, daka daka daka! <laughs> just the way the music kicks in just as the chain gun starts revving. That, that was a moment for me whilst playing this game for the uh, playthrough. Oh, the Rocco Scanners cannot stand up to the chain gun's might! <laughs> it just doesn't stop. <laughs> Everything's just getting turned to pulp, but, you know, 
I have to give some love to the other weapons as well, because Jing Gun has limited ammo, and I kind of want to save it just in case. So I wanted to give it a good debut. Damn, man. They just, they just explode like a squashed tomato, really. <laughs> it's just crushing it with your bare hands. <laughs> Uh, if only it were possible. Unfortunately, they're slightly too big. So what was your experience playing through this particular level then? Other than, of course, not picking up the chain gun because you weren't the way you could pick it up to begin with. <laughs> well, yes, we all know I'm a numpty by now, but uh, this one wasn't too bad until pretty much like the final third, I'd say, where I kept like... I was in a choke point, essentially, and I couldn't really make progress. This, and especially the next level, were the toughest I'd faced in Doom 2016 so far. Yeah, I can agree with that. I'm pretty sure Part 8, as well, was one of those levels where I did get caught out quite a bit. It's usually those unassumably small rooms that you end up going into a corner just to kind of grab some spare health and ammo, and then before you know it, you're kind of surrounded by dudes shooting at you whilst you're trying to avoid things charging at you and it just becomes a bit too much after a while and you can get overwhelmed quite quickly if you're not careful. Nearly died there, Volk. Nearly, but luckily I'm pretty good at the whole jumping thing at this point. Jesus, just two shots from the super shotgun sends them into prone mode? If you're at point blank range, sometimes if you miss a couple of shots in the spread it can take three, but if you pretty much get two shots perfectly, it will put them prone in two. I do believe as well there are some runes that make it a lot easier, although I don't think I actually have any on, so in theory it might be possible with a couple of shots even if you happen to miss a little bit of the spread even, but you'll need the upgrades for that one. And I believe there is a rune challenge. Okay, let's try this shit out then. So everything seems to be on fire. Well, it is hell. I suppose fire is kind of in their uh, decor. It's like how we use pure, brilliant white in the bathrooms. Fire is their undercoat. So for this particular one, it's actually more of a jumping puzzle. So the idea is, is that there's these little room boxes that you have to pick up, and each one will give you an extra boost in your timer. Huh. And also, on top of that, you have to make sure you collect each one. Don't do what I did, where I had the impression I could just miss a couple to get there quicker. No, you can't do that. <laughs> so, uh, do pay attention. You do have to have to collect all 15 of these. And for your reward for this one, you actually get some additional jumping benefits. So in this case, you get more control in midair. So you may notice when you're double jumping in this game, sometimes you kind of float a bit and you can't like quickly change your direction one way afterwards. So this room will help you have a little bit more control in that regard. And when it's upgraded especially, it gets pretty, pretty nice. Nice. You can pretty much jump anywhere and anywhere you want in midair. So if you're into aerial acrobatics, then that may well be the room for you, and um, I am interrupted by the arrival of the Pinky. Ah! The Pinky was actually introduced very early on in Doom 2, especially. <laughs> but um, in this case, he comes by, charges at you, so I thought I could return the favor in kind and just chainsaw him because new enemy. You got to see what the chainsaw animations like. It's just the rule at this point. They're a lot more defensive from the front, I believe, so just get out of the way when they charge you. They uh, are some of the more predictable enemies, honestly, because they will always run right at you, so you can take advantage of that. You can, although it doesn't make them any less terrifying, especially with other enemies thrown into the mix, because, like you say, if you spend your focus too much on the pinkies, there are oftentimes other enemies that will just surround you and cause all kinds of problems. We almost died, because the zombies were kind of blocking our way. <laughs> Which was a wee bit embarrassing to almost get felled by the basic ass runt, but there you go, sometimes that's just how it goes. The fodder can oftentimes be the main problem just because you're not really focusing on it. This is where you can get the chain gun if you didn't get it earlier, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's on the floor just by the garage over there, so if you somehow didn't pick it up when it was there the first time, then that's where you can grab it the next time. 
And that's what I quite like as well about this game, where they always leave the weapons lying around just in case. And I believe there might actually be two reasons for it. Uh, the first one being obviously to be there just in case you missed out on it, but also there's a arcade mode in this game where it kind of you kind of play for a high score as opposed to just getting from one end of the level to the other. And I believe the weapons on the floor play into that because obviously you start out with your basic handgun no matter what level you're on. So you kind of have to find all your bits and bobs from there in order to get your expanded arsenal sort of like midway end of the level. Oh, oh, this is the bit I kept constantly dying on right here. When those doors at the end open, you're going to see some serious shit. Actually, I didn't have as much problem with this part, just because it was so wide open and there's all these little cubby holes you can hide in, so you can kind of lure the enemies around if you so desire and then kind of shoot them when they're all kind of inside a hole where they're not nearly as mobile or you kind of know where they all are. So this wasn't so much of a problem for me. I think the problem was I kept thinking the door had to be opened manually. So every time I saw the checkpoint obtained thing, I thought, oh, this must be the end of the level. Then like another three dudes spawn behind me as I'm running for the door. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> it kept luring me into a false sense of security, Tom. I don't like it. <laughs> well, that's doom for you, mate. The legions of hell aren't going to make it easy for you. Nope. It's just like, ah, oh, checkpoint. So this means I can open the door now. Oh, it's not opening automatically. Must open it manually. Nope. Oh, there's more enemies. Okay, I guess I'm doing this again. Them tricksy demons. Playing on my sense of accomplishment now. It's fine, Mark. <laughs> it's fine. Let it go. Ah. <sighs> I love it when they go splat in the morning or evening, I can't really tell, since we're on Mars and hell is everywhere. Oh yes, they do have a very satisfying splat, which I suppose makes up for the fact they don't really have much in the way of variation in their glory kills. So they had to make them fall apart in different satisfying ways, whether it be exploding or literally just kind of crumbling. So I kind of did get they went with that. It kind of gets over that limitation and it's more pinkies. Now this is where that little area at the bottom does come in handy, but if you have the chainsaw handy, eh, it does just as well. The nice thing is, is that pinkies don't use that many pips, I think. Hmm. So, the chainsaw is pretty handy for taking them down if you happen to have it on you, but... Of course, you may want to save that for when you're actually out of ammo, and I just have to say... That was a nice combination rocket laser shot right there. <laughs> oh, oh, always showing off to make sure everyone thinks Volk is the best and then Tom is the worst, but we know Volk is the best, so why even bother? Uh, I'll, I'll take that compliment. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just kept dying there over and over because I was too. It was like Volk said earlier. I was too focused on the pinkies, and I kept getting like blindsided by the second one or blown up by the Mancubus's rockets and whatnot. It's kind of weird how the game kind of conditions you. It, like throws in all these big things. You're just like, holy hell, this thing is tough. And then after a while, they don't become much of a problem, but you're still focusing on them, even when they're not that big of a problem. So. You kind of get conditioned to think that these larger enemies are a big threat that need to be taken down first. But then, so it's all like towards the mid-late points of the game, they start throwing more of the rabble at you on top of it. And of course, usually at that point, it's the rabble that ends up killing you, and it's no longer a matter of these big things that you're having to fight taking you down eventually. Very true, mate. You're playing it very dangerously with these two pinkers, I have to say, but it's uh, it paid off beautifully there. Challenging my inner matador. Oh yeah, goodbye! <laughs> and of course that guy popped in behind and just like, yeah, he's not gonna have a good day. <laughs> Once again, Hell Knights, they were the most terrifying, ferocious thing for the first few levels, and uh, now they're barely above imps in terms of danger. Hmm, absolutely true. I suppose they're sort of meant to be sort of like in that mid-range where it's not quite a Baron of Hell or something like that, or a Mancubus, but... It can still cause problems if you're not keeping an eye out, because for something that big, it's pretty fast. I mean, these Barons of Hell, they're even bigger, but they're not nearly as swift, so you can normally keep a bead on them pretty easily. Oh, brutal! <laughs> That's the name of the game. 
Huh. Probably best not to go down to the electro water. I know my video games. Yeah, I can tell there's not even going to be a Terminator reference in my favour for that one, so going to keep away from that. But uh, we've got to find our way to traverse over this, so let us see what is available to us. Another obvious secret that no wonder I'm not able to upgrade my fucking weapons if I can't find these Halo drones. Uh, the thing is, though, you only really need one, and there's only some occasions where being able to switch weapon mods on the fly does actually work out. So, say for the plasma rifle, for instance. Obviously, the stun grenade is great for utility, but a weapon like that actually benefits from having both uh, mods, because then if you don't necessarily need the stun, you can change it over to the heat blast and then just rip into enemies with that instead, which makes it more powerful, but of course you lose the utility for a while. But then again, if you don't need it, it's a worthwhile sacrifice. Okay, we're getting closer to where the pinky took the marine with the keycard, but uh, I have a feeling Volk has sensed a few secrets around here. Well, I'm trying not to leave as many stones unturned if I possibly can, because I know these runes later on get really, really powerful. Um, there's a, there's one coming up in part, it's either 8 or 9, I believe, which is of particular interest, but we'll get to that one when we actually find it. But if there are any runes that you definitely don't want to skip, it is the last, like, 4 or 5. Those are the ones you really want to try and get. This is a really good reward. Glory Killing Demons drops armor. Oh uh, yes, so even if you have maximum health, it is still worth actually going in for those glory kills. Because one thing I find when I'm playing Doom and I get to all of these, these later points in the game is that I'm not making the glory kills as much because my arsenal at this point is so strong that I don't feel the need to go in close and risk it because even though they are prone and they still have a little bit of health, it doesn't take much to remove that last little bit of health. And especially for larger enemies, their prone state doesn't really last a long time. So if you're far away anyway, the chances are, unless you have the rune upgrades for it, you're not going to get close enough to actually execute the glory kill in time. So, in that regard, making sure that you have armor just incentivizes it to kind of stay in that mid-range. So, you say, oh, I've already got max health, but I don't have maximum armor. And the armor itself is going to be playing into things a little bit more later on, but as I said, we'll get to that when we get there, because that's an entirely different rune. There you go. But, in general, this rune is just very good, so please do pick it up. <laughs> it has combo potential, yes, but just on its own, it's still bloody fantastic. I got you. Alright, how are you doing here? Kill 30 demons while in midair. Woohoo! Yeah, that's not as bad, especially if you find, like, a whole pack of zombos. You can just literally jump in the air with a super shotgun and just go from there. Some of these rune challenge upgrades are actually pretty easy, but there are others that... I wouldn't go as far as saying they're difficult, it's just that they're probably going to take you a long time because it's things like acquire 5,000 health or something along those lines. It's something that you're going to have to get a fair way through the game just naturally in order to get a hold of. But there are others that are just really piss easy, which is always appreciated. It means you've always got some easy upgrade you can go for whilst you're kind of waiting for the other ones to eventually tick over. I'll be very careful here with this cliff platforming, because I went head over tit straight into a bottomless pit. <laughs> it was just like a banana peel. It was just like, whoop! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be so funny if Doomguy actually died from a fucking Looney Tunes-esque escapade. Bonus points if you put in the Goofy Scream there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's not turn this into Goofy Movie 3. Goofy Strikes Back from Hell. <laughs> It was just Goofy in the suit all along. <laughs> and he just has that angry face from Kingdom Hearts 3 to boot. It's just like, yeah, he, yeah. he always <laughs> wants to square up in every scene I've seen of Goofy in Cage 3 so far. Like, he, he didn't like being hit by a rock in the head in the second game. Let's put it that way. Oh, the triple barrel chain gun. Oh, this thing is just an absolute dream. It's not really much right now because it overheats if you fire it for too long. So you kind of have to do it in short bursts, but the nice thing is, unlike the original chain gun, it pretty much goes up to full rev instantly. But it does mean you can't just keep on firing forever until everything is gone. You kind of have to pick and choose your targets carefully, but you will pretty much rend anything to shreds with it within a second or two. 
Like, even a Mancubus, which is usually pretty resilient to bullets, doesn't tend to last very long against chain gun fire from the uh, turret mode. Then again, a Mancubus doesn't last very long to a chainsaw to the gut either, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what my point is here exactly, but the chain gun, you can do it from far away. There you go. That's a good conclusion to draw. You're just a walking armament at this point. Come on, get your upgrades and whatnot. There you go. Okay, makes Batman look like a sissy in comparison. <laughs> yeah, you got a Batarang? Yeah, check out what I got in my <laughs> in my corner pocket. We're pretty much at the end of the level now, so uh, just keep an eye out for any uh, any demons that are bopping about. And here's the yellow key card. <laughs> Died before he could even finish his meal. I was half expecting the pinky just to kind of wake up. Like, yeah, so it was sort of like it was just sleeping or something like that. It was just like kind of groggy, and then like you pull the thing, and then just as it just kind of snaps at you and gets up. Oh, precious law. Mom, Dad, please stop fighting. <laughs> I own him! That's not what the divorce agreement said! <laughs> oh, Jesus. He goes to hell one weekend and he spends the next weekend with me. We agreed on this. <laughs> it's like, this is why I don't like visiting my mother. <laughs> she's always got all this talk about the demons and the denizens of hell. Now she's going to become a god. And it's just like, I don't want to hear that shit. I just want to sit down and watch TV. There you go. Okay, one more room I believe and then we should be at the tram and uh, that's it honestly it's a very simple level overall just very point A to point B as is the case with most Doom levels don't really know what I'm talking about here but uh, this is very much the calm before the storm because the next level it gives you a really cool weapon but it also lays it on thick with the enemies and partly with the lore as well there is a bit of talky talky in there the thing is, this is kind of more of a bridging level. This is kind of like a break. It's not a very long level, but from this point on, the levels get a lot more expansive, and there's a lot more lore potentially being thrown at you if you wish to pursue it. I mean, like, even the last area doesn't necessarily have lots of defenses, but it makes up for it in the next level, which you'll be seeing in just a short time. Look, I think there's battery in this thing. <laughs> it's just like, imagine if there was no fuel and, like, the level goes on another 15 <laughs> minutes and it's just you trying to find jerry cans to fill it up. <laughs> but, thankfully, that's not the case. A more residential doom would have you take a bus, but you don't have to change and thus you can't end the level. Uh, bless. Alright, guys, we'll see you next time for part 8 of Doom. See you then.